tis the season, as they say. And for me, it means I'm painting a lot of pet portraits. That's generally what folks like to give uh, as a gift around here, and I'm very grateful for that. And today's painting will be of a black lab named Marlo. And this is the finished piece, and here's her reference. And I'm gonna take you on that little, on that little trip and show you how I started the piece. And uh, yeah, so again, if you're here, it's because you like to watch painting tutorials and product reviews and everything art, and I'm glad you're here. So if you're my subscribers, thank you so much. And if you're not, go ahead and take care of that right now and let's become friends and subscribe. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead on the painting journey of Marlo. Okay, so here we have a blank surface and the actual reference that I'm working from. Now, what I did was just did a, just a really light wash of paint on top of my substrate, which happens to be a gessoed panel. And I am wiping off the shapes and only doing a value study basically with uh, using dioxazine purple. That's it. And <laughs> on this particular day when I'm doing this painting, uh, it, was a, it was a weekend and I had family in the studio and they were putting in, um, you know, computer stuff and Wi-Fi and yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what all that business is in the background. And when I get stressed out, I paint. So on this day, on this particular Saturday, I actually started two pieces. Uh, this of Marlow and that of another another piece. So if you're looking at this palette, you're probably wondering why is there so much orange and green on the palette when I'm painting a black dog? Well, that's because I used the same palette to do both paintings, that of the Western Tanninger, which was last week's video, and this painting of Marlow. So I'm putting in the background here and just zipping around and putting in my dark values and creating um, the shapes that's, that is Marlow. the eyes the eyes the eyes that's my favorite favorite part and you can see I'm just uh, getting the colors in and I'll get over here and work on the other eye um, and you'll see as I, I progress I actually I think I actually make her eyes just a little bit bigger the fun colors you know you have a basically a black animal and when you get to add those golds and those yellows in the eyes that just is such a welcome break to the uh, monotony of black and purple and blue As I mentioned before, I had actually started the, uh, the um, Western Tanninger bird piece the same time that I was doing uh, Marlowe's portrait. So I kind of flipped back and forth between the two paintings. Uh, yeah, tis the season as they say. And like I said, if you folks are interested in having your pet's portrait painted and perhaps even featured on a YouTube video, hit me up. I'd love to help you out there. Now you can see we're progressing a little bit further into this piece and I will inch out the head or change and tweak uh, the basic shape or overall shape of the uh, of my subject's head in this case uh, Marlowe and uh, I'm, I'm getting close I'm getting close 
And again, you're seeing the other fun colors of the Western Tanager because I'm working off the same palette. And I've been known to do that many, many times. Okay, and I'm getting down to the wire, and I'm adding all the shine in this dog's face. And as you can see, I've got to, every now and then, you've got to be able to check it against the reference to make sure everything's going, going on target here. And uh, knowing how to stack the shine up, it, it's going to be that you're adding um, a cooler, darker version of the shine and then putting your lighter version on top. So in this case, I'm using a lot of King's Blue mixed with white, and then I'm going in with a little bit more of a lighter version or lighter value of that same color on top. And that gives it that, you know, that transition that makes it look well, believable anyway. <laughs> As you see, I'm working with a small round brush. This is a Rosemary Eclipse round. I believe that is probably a number two round, and it does allow me to get a lot of the details in. And I'm just moving around the piece, and you'll see me hold my brush horizontally, and that's generally me checking my angles against my reference to make sure I'm on target. I am working in a hot sunny window in my studio and you're watching that sun creep up on the dog's face and eventually it just dissipates. Here you see the sunlight just dissipating as it goes behind the building. I love working in my studio. It offers such great light and uh, but in the fall it can be quite hot and toasty in my window. My students can attest to that. Um, yeah, still working with that same brush and again the um, it's offering, it's giving me everything I need. And I've, I've enlarged the eyes a little bit more, and uh, we're getting, uh, getting close here towards the end of the painting. And I feel like I'm, I'm you know, finally coming around. This is when you start to realize, okay, we're almost finished. We're almost finished. Um, I'm totally digging the piece. And here you see the finished piece of Miss Marlowe, and she will be going to her home, uh, the Gisa family in North Carolina will be receiving their painting, and I hope they enjoy what I've done with Miss Marlowe's portrait. Ta-da! There she is. There's Marlowe. And one of the hardest things, I guess, about painting a black animal is getting all the different values. You kind of have to get in there close. But you can see the little, just a little bit of different values uh, that help make that up. Of course, you've got all this shine here too, but, and of course, it's always the eyes. 
eyes are always the best part. I don't care what species it is, the eyes are the best. So again, if you enjoyed today's video, please give me some thumbs up. And hey, maybe you would like to see your pet painted here on YouTube, then uh, contact me, leave your information below in the comment section. I'll love to get with you and talk about painting your dog or cat or horse or whatever. I'd love to do that for you. And uh, again, if you're my subscribers, thank you. And if you're not, why not? Go ahead, hit the button and we'll be friends. And now, so I'm hoping that you, if you, my American friends here are planning on having a happy and healthy, safe Thanksgiving coming up. Uh, yeah, you know what? It's a tricky time, right? So please be safe and enjoy your holiday. And uh, yeah, so uh, from Kingsport, Tennessee, until next time, thanks so much for being here.